Don't you just crave a delicious casserole sometimes? And let's be honest, nobody made them quite like Grandma did back in the day. Here are 20 casseroles we've totally forgotten about. Let's start the video with a classic, the Johnny Marzetti casserole. If you grew up in Ohio, I'm sure you've had this beef and macaroni casserole. Now, this casserole was named after a real person. Johnny Marzetti was named after the brother of Teresa Marzetti, an Italian immigrant who opened a restaurant in Columbus, Ohio in 1896. This dish was the restaurant's most popular offering and soon became the talk of the town. In the 1950s and 1960s, Johnny Marzetti was a common item on school lunch menus in the Midwest. That's because of its kid-friendly ingredients. The best part about this one was that it could be made in advance and baked just in time for dinner, which means you didn't have to visit grandma for this one every time. The key to a good Johnny Marzetti was the cheese blend. It was typically made with a combination of cheddar, provolone, and Parmesan cheese. Next up, we have the Shipwreck Casserole. If you think this name's creative, keep watching, because some of these casserole names will leave you scratching your head. So, the Shipwreck Casserole was a go-to for families during tough economic times because it was simple, budget-friendly, and made with ingredients that were often already on hand. The name Shipwreck referred to the hodgepodge of ingredients tossed together as if it were a shipwreck of a meal. Grandma's pantry was almost always stocked, but during the hard times, even she had to make do with whatever was available. This delicious casserole was versatile and typically consisted of ground beef, potatoes, onions, and canned tomatoes, with the occasional addition of baked beans or vegetables like carrots and green beans. So, tamales are a labor of love, but thanks to Grandma, this tamale pie was a much easier way to enjoy the flavors. This casserole caught on like fire in the early 20th century, particularly in the Southwest, where Mexican influence was strong. Just like most casseroles on the list, this one-dish wonder was also a creation of the Depression era. Some versions of this pie started out as a way to use up leftovers, such as bits of meat, vegetables, and even leftover chili. But hey, no one complained because the end result was a delicious dinner. Many families have an heirloom recipe for this casserole passed down from generation to generation. So if this casserole brings back memories from your childhood, it might be time to give grandma a call. She could be holding on to a secret recipe that she's finally ready to pass down to you. While the southern states were enjoying Tex-Mex cuisine, the northern states were all about Italian flavors, and baked ziti was a staple on the dinner table. Now, even with its Italian roots, you wouldn't typically find this one in Italy. This casserole was created by grandmas who were Italian immigrants to the States and adapted traditional pasta dishes to suit the ingredients available in their new country. Baked ziti was pretty much the long-lost cousin of lasagna, with the classic version including ziti pasta, marinara sauce, ricotta, and mozzarella cheese. The ziti pasta used in the dish was tubular and smooth, which makes it ideal for holding onto the sauce and cheese. This one was a hit at Sunday dinners and had everyone coming back for seconds. Remember when Campbell's cream of mushroom soup and canned tuna were the stars of the food aisle back in the day? Well, Grandma took those humble ingredients and spun them into her classic tuna noodle casserole. During the 1950s and 1960s, convenience foods were all the rage and tuna noodle casserole fit the bill perfectly. It was a post-World War II creation and was whipped up in no time with ingredients already on hand. Plus, it was a classic comfort food that brought everyone together at Graham's dinner table. During the mid-20th century, tuna noodle casserole was a mainstay in American cookbooks and cooking magazines. It was often featured in advertisements and was promoted as a quick and easy dish for the busy homemaker. This one fell out of flavor, but thanks to the recent revival of noodle dishes, we might see this one back on the menu soon. In the meantime, why not dust off grandma's old cookbooks and bring it back yourself? Cheese and potatoes are like a match made in heaven, and grandma's cheesy, scalloped potatoes was straight out of any cheese lover's dream. So this casserole tastes even better than it looked, and let me tell you, it looked finger-licking delicious. The term scalloped comes from the French word escalope which originally referred to thin slices of meat. 
However, in the case of scalloped potatoes, it refers to the thinly sliced potatoes used in the dish. Many grandmas used old-fashioned methods to make their cheesy scalloped potatoes, including hand-slicing the potatoes thinly, layering them with love, and cooking them slowly. Some even added secret ingredients they swear by, like a dash of nutmeg, a hint of garlic, or even a sprinkle of paprika for added flavor. The best part about this one was its crispy crust, and I'm sure you remember fighting all your siblings for the bigger chunk of it. This dish wasn't only tasty, but was also practical. It was a one-pot wonder, meaning it could be cooked and served in the same dish, making cleanup a breeze. I'm sure Grandma loved that. So, squash might not be our top pick on a regular day, but Grandma's squash casserole was so irresistible that we found ourselves going back for seconds, or even thirds. This casserole was a staple in Southern cuisine and was Graham's favorite way of sneaking nutrients into our dinner. Squash is rich in vitamins A and C, potassium and fiber, making it a wholesome choice. Now, this dish was typically famous in the summer when squash was available in abundance, but you could freeze the veggie and enjoy it all year round too. Squash casserole was highly customizable, meaning Graham could tweak it by adding cooked bacon, sausage, or even fresh herbs. The secret ingredient that gave this bad boy its unique taste was a dash of hot sauce, so next time you attempt making this dish for a potluck, don't forget the key ingredient. Thank me later! Leftover turkey in the fridge? Consider it your lucky day because that used to call for Grandma's legendary turkey noodle casserole. This casserole made mornings after Thanksgiving something to look forward to. This was the go-to recipe for using up leftover turkey and noodles after Thanksgiving or Christmas. All Grandma had to do was mix in the ingredients and add a topping made from breadcrumbs, crushed crackers, or even fried onions. Like most of the casseroles on this list, this was also a one-dish wonder and didn't require much labor. And you know Graham used to be tired from making us a grand feast the night before, so this was an easy way to serve something delicious on the dining table without putting in too much effort. This was a kid-friendly meal that appealed to even the pickiest eaters. What's not to love about a creamy sauce and some noodles all drenched in cheese? The French also made a significant contribution to delicious casseroles with the Easy Shepherd's Pie. It was a meaty casserole traditionally made with lamb meat. Shepherd's pie has its roots in British cuisine. The name shepherd's pie specifically refers to the use of lamb, while cottage pie is used when beef is the main ingredient. This one was an easy one to make as it didn't require hours of preparation. The dish became popular in the UK during the 19th century, particularly after the introduction of potatoes in the late 18th century. This one was used for meal prep, as it was great for making ahead and freezing. It was known as Hachis Parmentier in French cuisine, but different countries came up with their own version of the shepherd's pie. In Australia and New Zealand, it's often called cottage pie, and in some places the dish includes sweet potatoes or other unique toppings. Green bean casserole started out as a traditional Thanksgiving meal, but because of how much everyone loved it, it soon became a year-round delicacy. This one was also created as a creative way to market Campbell's cream of mushroom soup. When canned soups first hit the food aisle at grocery stores, many people were skeptical about them. Introducing new recipes was a way of encouraging people to add them to their daily meals, and Grandma really followed through with this one. The original recipe, known as the green bean bake, was developed by Dorcas Riley, a home economist at Campbell's. It combined green beans, cream of mushroom soup, and fried onions, and it was published in the company's recipe booklet. Our sweet old grandmas decided to make this one better by adding their own twists to the original recipe. Although traditionally rich and creamy, there were lighter versions of green bean casserole that used lower fat ingredients or alternative toppings to make it healthier. You can't possibly reminisce about grandma's forgotten casseroles without bringing up the ham and potato casserole. This one combined two classic comfort foods, ham and potatoes, and instantly became a favorite on the dining table. You know all those leftover ham that goes bad in your refrigerator after the holidays? Well, this recipe was a way to spice it up and turn it into something new, and of course, Grandma did it best. There was even a healthier version of the ham and potato casserole that was made using lean ham, low-fat dairy products, 
and extra vegetables to boost the nutritional content. Grandma used whatever potatoes she could find at the farmer's market, but this one could be made by a variety. Some recipes called for russets, while others used Yukon gold or red potatoes, depending on your texture preference. Speaking of veggie casseroles, the cabbage roll casserole was another hit on the dinner table. Don't we all love some good old-fashioned cabbage rolls? Well, this recipe took the labor-intensive meal and turned it into something simpler while retaining all the delicious flavors. Now this casserole has its origins in Eastern European cuisine, where cabbage rolls are a staple. It was a combination of recipes found in countries like Poland, Russia, and Hungary. Cabbage casserole not only tasted delicious, but also provided many health benefits with every bite. Cabbage is a nutritious vegetable that's rich in vitamins C and K, fiber, and antioxidants. Delicious and healthy. What's more to ask? Eggplant Parmesan casserole is another Italian classic that became a favorite in the United States. Eggplant was often a challenge to serve to picky eaters, so Grandma got creative and found a way to sneak it into delicious dishes which resulted in the creation of this hearty dish. In Italy, it's better known as Parmigiana and is a popular gourmet dish. The casserole is a more laid-back version of the delicacy, as you can enjoy the flavors of this classic Italian dish without all the work of frying each individual slice of eggplant. Don't get me wrong, Graham loved making us those labor-intensive meals, but even she deserved a break sometimes. And this casserole gave her the perfect opportunity to whip up something delicious without spending hours in the kitchen. The turkey noodle casserole wasn't the only way of using up leftover turkey from the fridge. Turkey tetrazzini was another delicious dish you could make the morning after Thanksgiving. This casserole typically started out with a base of spaghetti, along with a creamy sauce that's usually made from a combination of broth, cream, and sometimes cream of mushroom soup and vegetables like peas, carrots, or celery. It was named after the Italian opera singer Luisa Tetrazzini, who was known for her performances in the early 20th century. The dish is believed to have been created in the early 20th century, coinciding with Tetrazzini's rise to fame. Many recipes included cheese, such as parmesan or cheddar, which made it kid-friendly. This was another great example of how Graham could make something so delicious out of leftovers that might have otherwise gone to waste. You might have never heard about this next one unless you grew up in Memphis, but trust me, it's worth knowing and tasting. So, Tennessee onions consisted of thick slices of sweet onions smothered in a creamy, cheesy sauce and baked until golden and bubbly. The key to making this one stand out from all the other casseroles on the table was the sweetness of the onions. Vidalia onions were often used because of their natural sweetness, but any sweet onion did the job. This wasn't necessarily the star of the dinner table. It was more of a side dish that complemented other main courses like grilled meats or fried chicken. Let's be honest, no one did casseroles quite like the Southerners, and their classic cornbread casserole spoke for itself. Cornbread has been a staple in many grandma's kitchens for generations. It's often passed down through family recipes, with each grandma adding her own unique twist. This is one of the most famous members of the casserole families and was a staple at family dinners and potlucks. The best part? Anyone could make it. Yes, it was that easy. You just had to mix the ingredients, pour them into a baking dish, and let the oven do the work. It was a great everyday dinner, especially for busy cooks looking for a fuss-free meal. You could also customize this casserole and experiment with different types of cheese. Speaking of cheese, does anyone here remember the infamous cheesy broccoli rice casserole? I'm sure you have childhood memories of running away from this one because of the broccoli. Yeah, wasn't broccoli everyone's biggest enemy growing up? Well, this casserole made you hate the green veggie a little less. The cheese topping was used to hide the greens in the dish and trick kids into eating this bad boy without making any fuss. You had to get your nutrients in one way or another, and this casserole made it 10 times better. Broccoli is packed with nutrients like vitamins C and K, fiber, and antioxidants. This casserole turns the nutritious vegetable into a kid-friendly dish that the whole family can enjoy. Now, let's hit pause on the hearty casseroles and turn our attention to a timeless classic, chicken pot pie. The dish became especially popular in the U.S. during the mid-20th century 
with the rise of frozen meals. Brands like Stouffer's helped bring chicken pot pie into the frozen food aisle, and it soon became a favorite. I'm sure you already know, but it's a type of meat pie with a top pie crust consisting of flaky pastry. Different regions have their own takes on chicken pot pie. For example, in the southern U.S., it might feature a biscuit topping instead of a traditional pie crust, while other regions might use different seasonings or ingredients. This delicacy isn't only famous on menus. Chicken pot pie has made its way into literature and pop culture. For instance, it's featured in various novels, movies, and TV shows as a symbol of home and comfort. This next one remains a favorite at the holiday dinner table. I'm talking about the cheesy hash brown casserole. This dish is also known as funeral potatoes because it is commonly served as a side dish during traditional after-funeral dinners. However, it is also popular at potlucks and other social gatherings, sometimes under different names. The dish usually consists of hash browns or cubed potatoes, cheese, onions, cream soup or a cream sauce, sour cream, and a topping of butter with cornflakes or crushed potato chips. It typically uses frozen hash browns, which makes the preparation quick and easy. While it was often served as a side dish, cheesy hash brown casserole was also enjoyed for breakfast or brunch. Now, that's a breakfast I'd never skip. Moreover, this dinner meal is so famous that during the 2002 Winter Olympics in Salt Lake City, one of the souvenir food pins featured this casserole. Of course, we saved the best one for last. You could never go wrong with a good old classic baked macaroni and cheese. Whether you're 5 or 45, I'm sure you're a fan of this casserole. The dish is believed to have originated from Italy, where pasta and cheese were combined as early as the 13th century. However, the baked version we know today became popular in the United States, particularly in the southern and midwestern regions. The classic recipe calls for cheddar cheese, but you can mix different cheeses like Gruyere, Parmesan, or mozzarella to take it up a notch. Many schools throughout the U.S. offer it as a lunch option because who doesn't like some good old mac and cheese? Thomas Jefferson, the third president of the United States, was a big fan of macaroni and cheese. He's the one who brought the recipe back to the U.S. from his travels in Europe. Plus, it's even better in the form of a baked casserole. So did any of these classic grandma casseroles stir up tasty memories? If so, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and let's keep those memories alive.